Hi guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Sully. And we're Team SNS. We're here with our Dallas America's Greatest Otaku candidate, Todd Haberkorn. Todd, thanks for being with us. Of course, thank you for having me. So, you're a voice actor. Yes, yes, of course. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, why don't you prove us that you're a voice actor? Well, we are currently located in a 48,000 square foot facility, which is the number one leading distributor of anime in the entire United States, known as Funimation Entertainment. Also, I have this pack right here, which is installed as I was a child, when you know, we need microphones as a voice actor, mm -hmm. plus this show right here, I'm actually in this show as a character named Ling Yao, and you can see this on Cartoon Network every Saturday night. I am partially convinced. I still need some more convincing. Give me your best shot. Okay. Well, I'll give you a hint. This show involves an amphibian. It has 323 <laughs> episodes, and we're working on the next volume of the show. And I play a character that wears a yellow cap and has a red star on it's it. It's Caro. Bingo. See, Sergeant Frog. I mean, he knew it right there. Right away. That was too easy. You need another one? I, I think I need another one. Okay, let's see. Pasta! Italia, Italy. Bingo. Dang it. Oh, you're doing Italy? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So, <laughs> there we go. That's awesome. Is that convincing? Yeah, uh, is it? No. Still, I refuse. I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. I think I need one more. Okay. Just one. Bring forth salvation to that tormented Akuma soul. Akuma? Akuma. Street Fighter? Street not close. I, I, I called that character Akuma because of Street Fighter. Not for a second, right? Actually, and I did the I did something else for that. Wait, did you, were you the guy with the bear on his head, with the bear head in Afro Samurai? No. No, no we'll talk okay. about that later. All right, all right, all right. It's no, an no. offshoot of this this property. Oh, right here. Full Metal Alchemist. Bro I, that, I did that earlier. <laughs> it begins with a D, ends D. with a gray man. D gray man. D gray man. Bingo. I got that first. Okay. No, I got that first. No. Nah, okay. Technically, I would say I that you get that yeah, first, okay, but fine, you can, you, with the power of editing, you could have gotten <laughs> yeah, that first. Yeah, there we go. So how do you define an otaku? Well, let's see. Uh, Wikipedia defines an otaku as a Japanese term used to refer to people with obsessive interests, particularly in anime, manga, and video games. And on all three counts, I am quite familiar with those. And you know, tying into the Japanese thing, making it bigger into an Asian thing, I'm half Asian. So right there, I've got every, vi every next-gen video game system. And as far as anime, I've got a bookshelves covered with anime. Now, granted, a lot of them are the anime that I've voiced, but still, I have them. <laughs> and as far as manga, come on, it's, it's a bedtime reading every day. Every day. When did you realize that you were an otaku? I think I've been an otaku for quite some time now. On top of the fact that uh, I was watching anime before I even knew it was anime. Voltron, come on, right there. Back when it was Japanimation, right there, much. exactly. Gundam, all of those things. Love before Gundam. I, it's just it was hardwired in there. So the best thing about being an otaku is the fact that uh, it's fun to be part of a little niche group and to see that it's growing and growing and growing and know that you were there in the ground floor with it, you know what I mean? How did you transition from your otaku passions to the professional environment? Well, it's, it's a lot of uh, columboing uh, the situation. So you watch these properties that you want to be, you're like, well, how do I become a part of that? And then you do a little bit of research, you find out where they do it, you break in, you refuse to leave until you get a small role, and then you work your way up from there. It's not illegal. You uh, got in there, uh, started working with the company uh, Funimation about four years ago, and, and now it's, uh, it's cons and recording in the booth and traveling all over the world to record video games and all that good stuff. So how does it get more otaku than that? It's, it's the very thing that sustains my livelihood. Are you America's greatest otaku? I would say that it sustains my livelihood, both professionally and personally. Without it, I would be out on the streets with nothing to do. And so by the very virtue that add to that, I'm also Asian, <laughs> near the birthplace of otakuism. Does it get more extreme? Does it get more great than that? I mean, you could be full Asian. The difference is like the, this the, guy. the loophole is you actually work for the, I mean, you're disqualified. So is he America's greatest otaku? Todd Habercorn from Dallas, Texas. Team SNS, signing out.